Do you remember we went over Jama and Niyama? So there are Jamas, five, and Niyamas. These are the yoga principles, spiritual principles for life. The first one was Ahimsa. Who remembers what Ahimsa is? And the second is Satya. This is Sanskrit language. So a reminder, Ahimsa is not to harm anyone and including not to harming who? Yourself. Yourself. Very good. Because the moment we're saying, I don't deserve it, I'm not good enough, my marriage not going to work, my relationship not going to work, we're sending the message that you don't deserve to be happy. And this is how we're harming ourselves. But also, we cannot harm animals. When we go to Whole Foods and store, we look at the meat products without even thinking that all the animals actually have souls. And when we eat them, we're harming them. And every time we're harming animal, animals by eating them, we're harming ourselves. So this is going to be the next level of your growth. And in the beginning, if it's hard for you to let go of lamb and beef, start at least with letting go of something. So if you have a lamb or beef, let go of beef. If you have lamb or chicken, choose chicken. It's what about deer meat and turkey and like wild game. Same thing. They're alive. Right? But this is going to be next level. For now, just start thinking about it. That every time you eat an animal, it, this animal had a soul. <laughs> and everything that animal experienced during the death, fear, anxiety, you are taking on their feelings. So, But again, don't start with the big steps. Start with baby steps. At least choose to let go of beef for example and then eat only lamb turkey and chicken and then when you're ready you can let go of lamb and eat only turkey and chicken and when you're ready you're going to let go of turkey and eat only chicken and eventually you'll be able to let go of that because every time again we're walking even outside we won't be able not to harm let's say um an ant we will step on it. It's impossible to follow 100% Ahimsa. But at the same time, we got to be conscious of that. And that's why my, my son, when he cleans, helps me to clean at home, and he sees a spider, he says, Mom, I'm going to take the spider outside. I said, thank you. Because we want to be responsible even for a spider. <laughs> um, and then the second um, principle we went over, because now I'm just going to go over it really fast, is satya. Because satya means being honest from Sanskrit. Because when we lie, we don't even realize that who are we really harming when we're lying? Ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And people lie on a different levels. But again, I'm going to send you this video if you haven't seen it. But we have to do everything. Satya spelled S-A-T-Y-A. -A. From Sanskrit, it's honesty. And it's our responsibility to be honest. Otherwise, we're walking around thinking, well, why people are lying to me? But it's part of samskara. If you're dishonest, someone will be dishonest with you. If you're lying to someone, someone will be lying. For example, in the modern dating uh, both men and women are very dissatisfied with each other. And women are complaining, all men are liars, hypothetically, right? But they forgot that five, ten years ago, they lied a man. And now the samskara, which people think in the United States as a karma, is coming back to them. And we have to be very responsible that everything we say, everything that even we think, we also have to be responsible and be honest. But today we're going to go in depth into principles. And the first principles, if you'd like, you can take a note. It's called Astea. Now, a lot of people are um, struggling financially now. And these two principles that we're going to go over will help you to understand how you're breaking the universal law you're violating and with that breaking of and violating this principle you will never feel that you're fulfilled and you have everything you need financially to feel of um, economic flow to feel harmony with money we need to practice asteya steya means stealing asteya means not stealing 
But the stealing has four different ways, and we're going to go over. St again, stay a stealing, a stay a not stealing. Clear? So a stay means doing everything you can not to steal. And all spiritual gurus say, if you really want to experience true flow of economy, you have to be very, very, very honest when it comes to money. Very. And we don't even think sometimes that we're breaking this law. And I want to go over now four different ways how we steal. The first one is obviously very obvious. You walk, let's say, hypothetically into the store and you see your favorite leather jacket without a tag. There's no price tag. And you decided to take it and you walk away. This is direct stealing. You took that from somebody. It belongs to someone else. Now this person doesn't have what belongs to them. Now you're never going to be in harmony with yourself and you wonder why you don't have the uh, flow of money. But Astea doesn't mean that you will have everything that you want. Astea means you will have everything that you need for your mind, body, and your soul. But at the same time, people nowadays in the modern days, they think, I want a second car. It will be convertible for a weekend. Or I want a house with a basement. Or I want house, I want to sell this house in a better neighborhood. Or I want not five shirts, I want 25 shirts. Or I want not one uh, bag, I want 10 bags. One for spring, one for summer, one with this close, one with that close. This is abundance of a lot of stuff. Astea, the second one, where you walked into the store and you thought, I want these shoes. It doesn't have a price tag. And you're already stealing. Even though you didn't take it physically, you just thought about it. This is a second type of stealing. Now your conscious mind is not going to be pure and it's not going to be clear. Because of that thought, you thought about it. Yeah? The third type of astea is that you took away, you ask a friend to give you $1,000. It's been six months and you haven't returned. That's a stealing. For example, you decided to call a taxi to take you somewhere, but the taxi came in and you think, well, I changed my mind. I don't want to go. Now this person spent their time, spent their money on gas, and you change your mind. This is stealing. You decided to uh, hire a contractor. They're fixing your roof. And you had an agreement, $10,000. They fixed your roof and you're saying, well, I think this job is actually $5,000. And now you're renegotiating and say, I'm going to pay you only $5,000. You stole $5,000 from this person. Um, eight months ago, a person said, Alisa, I want to interview you for a radio. We had an interview for an hour and a half. He hasn't posted this video. They stole an hour and a half of my time. Make sense? Um, I remember one of my first jobs when I moved to the United States. Well, so I was a dealer actually for a few months, <laughs> selling cars on the dealership. And I remember people used to come and they will say, Alisa, I love this Pathfinder. But I don't have $40,000. It's ridiculous money. I will give you $30,000. And they would start bargaining with me. And my English was really bad. But I understood they want to buy a car that costs $40,000 for $30,000. And I would joke around with them and I'd say, Okay, how about you give me $30,000. I give you the car, but I'll keep the engine. <laughs> and when you'll bring me $10,000, I'll give you back the engine. <laughs> because it's also stealing. And I... Also, remember that um, my stepfather, who passed away, unfortunately, nine years, was one of the 
best man I've actually met in my entire life, if we're not including my husband. And I remember when one time he bought the car while I was uh, selling cars. And I said, Giri, how much was your Lincoln? He said, I bought it for, I can't remember, I think he said forty-nine or $59,000. And I said, oh my God, it's so much money. Did you actually negotiate it with a dealer? <laughs> and he said, Alisa, this dealership needs to pay for electricity. It needs to pay salaries. It needs to pay blah, blah, blah benefits. And he said, no, I don't negotiate. And my stepfather was actually vice president of Coca-Cola. And he was a very, very noble man, never had problems with money. And then later, when I started studying uh, spirituality, I learned why. He was never bargaining. If it's cost $49,000, $49,000 it is. If it is $50, $50 it is. And I also want to share, I had years ago a friend of mine. Our kids were playing really well together. And she was always struggling financially. And then I looked at her life and I saw she would go for example to meditation center and meditation said a $50 donation and she would give only five dollars she would go to a birthday party and in the community where we're from usually gifts are between 25 to 50 dollars and she would give something from her house that she was not using to a, a birthday person okay and the more she was holding back the more financial crisis her and her husband and kids were experiencing and we have to look at our life where we feel like okay i'm not gonna give here i'm gonna hold back i'm not gonna give here it's an illusion that we're not giving we're taking away from ourselves because in the background we're dealing with greed let me go over the third principle. The third principle in Astea is that you know that you should be paying $8,000 taxes this year, but you go to the tax person and you say, I had extra expense here, I had extra expense here, and you're not paying $8,000 taxes, you're paying only $1,000. You stole $7,000 and you think, well, it's from government. Government is rich. But that's also a stare. This is also stealing. Make sense? Or you owe this person, a friend of yours, $500. And you don't have this $500, but you're not even in communication. You're also stealing. It's like you're not willing to pay what doesn't belong to you. You owe someone, but you're not paying. Gabriella, question. Ooh, I am. Um, does this concept also even? I was, I was kind of talking to my mom about this the other day. Yeah. Um, because we're growing up, we're very used to buying things like on sale, discount. Is it kind of like a similar concept? Like even buying something very discounted, you're still because you're not paying full price. I've, kind of, I've heard similar ideologies, even when you're actually going to a store. Um, I will explain. This is a very good question. For example, we go on YouTube and there's a lot of music and a lot of movies. We're watching a movie. We're pirating. That's pirating. This is Astea. We're stealing. We're listening to music. Somebody wrote a song, wrote a lyrics. They took time to record it. They put a video. It's a lot of time and energy of this big team, but we're listening to it for free. We're stealing. It's us there. But if you go to the store and the item was $50, but now it's $10, it's okay. It's the next principle. How many items are you buying? Do you really need this item or not? So this is the second principle we're going to go over shortly. Because, for example, the last few meetings were this don uh, that we're asking donations. But if people are not still donating for uh, the meetings, that's stealing. And when we're stealing from yogi monks, ah, 
the karma follows really fast. They're, because here's us, human beings, here's monks, and here's God. They're very close because they're doing the spiritual practices. That's why I'd rather uh, take your donations to protect you. Because some people might forget and some people thinking, well, I don't have enough. And the way the universe works, if you don't have a practice to start paying, to start appreciating the services, it's not going to give you what you really need even. And that's where this flow feel like, or oh, I just make $7 working in McDonald's, or I'm stuck in this job making only $40,000 a year. And people don't understand somewhere they are stealing. And when I learned this principle, I had to be with it because I realized a lot of documentaries that I love, I was pirating. And I didn't even realize that. Because I was searching, searching, I couldn't find it here, I couldn't find oh, but here's on the pirate set. And I'm like, wow, I am stealing documentary movies. And I had to be with it. And now when I'm listening to the yoga music, when I'm doing the yoga, I have to be very responsible. Where can I go and pay? Because somebody created this music. Because otherwise we're stealing. And if we really want to be in the harmony with ourselves, we have to be very, mm, really check where we owe money somewhere, where we're stealing, where we're even thinking about stealing. Because even the thought counts. By the way, people don't understand with us there. For example, you're single, but you met a married man or a married woman, and you are now seeing her, going, taking her to lunch and dinner, or now you're kissing or sleeping with her. You're stealing this person also. And the way some scatter works, it's going to be a matter of time when you get married, somebody, either in this or next life, will be stealing your husband or your wife. The way some scatter works, it's going to come back. It's just not immediately. It could be five, ten years later, and we're not even putting the dots together. Why somebody took my husband? Well, because ten years ago, you did something like that as well. And people are not connecting the dots. Yes, Sarah, question? Yeah, so this was very deep. Like, I started thinking, wow. Like, yeah. This is really, really deep. Yeah. Um, so I had, like, two, but lost. Um, so, like, let's say you, when you brought up the taxes, right? Yeah. Let's say, like, trust, but, like, you're the type of, okay, I got to, wait, Cassie, um, I got a lot of money and I want to do like trust funds. Like you really want to limit yourself on how much taxes and you do trust funds and life insurance and all that. Is that still stealing or because it's already a system for, you know, like people with high tax brackets or whatever, like. What you're saying is you're locating money instead of taxes into trust funds. Yeah, so like, let's say you want to pay the minimum of taxes, right? And you start going into trust funds. Would that be considered stealing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, because we have to understand that, and this is going to be very hard to understand for some of you. When we're born, we actually have a destiny to have, let's say, hypothetically, $1 million in this life for you. And let's say hypothetically 1.5 million for your child. This is two and a half million dollars, right? But when we think, let me not take off this taxes and put this um, into trust fund, you're stealing. You're actually cutting off this two and a half million dollars that were supposed to be yours. You're thinking you're going to save, but the way the karma going to work, you decreased your flow of money. Who knows how much you're stealing? That's how much it's impacts. And usually the way karma works, it's going to be 10 times fold. So you didn't pay taxes, $5,000. The universe is now punishing you, samskara, which people think of it as a karma. Going to take away, let's say, $50,000. 
and then you do it again and again and again and then now instead of two and a half dollar uh, two and a half million dollars that for entire life for you and your daughter you'll be getting only let's say 1.7 million dollars because all of the samskara accumulated and we don't even think about it because we don't know this law we're just thinking okay where i can take off here take off there here I didn't pay tips for the waitress here. I asked Uber to come, but I didn't pay for services. I canceled it here. I negotiated the roof and instead of $10,000, I paid $5,000 here. I pirated the movie here. I pirated the music songs here. I didn't pay in church here in meditation. The next thing we're sitting and we're thinking, why am I broke? Why am I broke? But all of this accumulated. And we need to become really authentic with ourselves where we're actually stealing. And even, even if we're thinking about it, it's already thinking because we have a hard layer of consciousness and thin layer. So every time when you think, I don't want to pay taxes or I don't want to pay tips, you paid not 15%, but you paid 14% and you even thought about it. You're already breaking this thin layer of consciousness. You're not going to experience harmony. So if you really want to experience the feeling where you don't feel like, okay, I cannot go here, I cannot go there, I cannot go there, I cannot go to this restaurant, or I cannot buy clothes, and you feel constantly scarcity is because somewhere, somewhere in life, you are dishonest with money. You are practicing staya, stealing. Yeah? Any questions with regards to asteya and staya? Stealing and not stealing, because it has to be our goal not to steal and understand these four principles. Any questions? Can you, can you spell, how do you, can you spell those two, please? Yeah, yeah. Aste is A-S-T-E-A, -E which means not to steal from Sanskrit language. And stea is S-T-E-A, is stealing. And again, here we have to understand that Astea doesn't mean that you will be abundant and you have Ferrari, Mercedes and mansion. It doesn't mean that. But it means the universe, God, will provide you with everything you need. Now, I'll share. A few days ago, I asked my husband. I said, honey, I really would like the summer to go maybe to Europe for a week or two or Bali. And my husband is not... The economy this year hasn't been good. And he said, honey, I don't think we'll go this year. And I thought immediately, like, oh, but I really want to. And then I'm catching myself, letting go. It's a want. It's not a need. But in life, we're living life where like, I want this, and I want this, and I want that. And there will never be enough food, enough clothes, enough cars, where you will feel like, okay, it's enough. And that's where we feel like the greed starts to take over. We want to either steal or we're going to go over this next principle, aparigraha. Aparigraha. Aparigraha means where you feel like you got to have more. So going to Florida or Mexico is not enough. I want Bali and Europe. Not enough. And if I'm continue thinking about it, not satisfied with what I have, I'm breaking aparigraha. And we have to learn to be satisfied with what we have. Without those two principles, we will never feel fulfillment and happiness in our economic situations and life. We will always feel like, I need more. I need more. And the more we're chasing, the more we will feel that it's not enough. I want more. And Harvard University, a few years ago, did test asking people in the United States, were they happier in the 70s when they had few items or now? They asked baby boomers. And they did this um, questionnaire around 10,000 people. And 10,000 people in the United States said they were happier having 
less stuff microwaves oven all of this technology computers and phone back in the 70s compared to now the happiness level significantly decreased and now also bizarre why sometimes my husband cannot understand when i say i wish we could live in kenya or i wish we could live in mexico third world countries uh hardly can survive there but when i'm there i feel huge flow of happiness you go to the village of kenya where people don't have no microwaves no phones nothing they just live in this little hut no windows no doors they live inside with cow and goats and 10 kids and everything but oh my god their happiness is out of the roof it's just nature little place to live and they're happier so so happy not happier happy and here we are in the developed countries and we think that we will be happy if i'm gonna have a bigger home more cars a pretty wife or rich husband and this is the big lie of capitalism the happiness is actually in simplicity very simple i used to make six figures and more working very little and the more I was making money the more I was spending money on material things vacations clothes and toys for our son husband was always taking care of um, the house bills and etc but since I let go of job and making zero income my happiness level is out of the roof how can you explain that but in a capitalistic country, in all self and growth development um, organizations and programs, they're telling you, anything you want is possible, continue to work hard, you're going to have money, uh, achieve American dream, and you'll be happy. Not true. Not true. And so right now we're really <laughs> questioning in this conversation capitalism. Yes, Gabriela. I guess so probably like a lot of the ladies here I consider myself a recovering hustle queen and um, recovering girl boss whatever you like to call it yeah and I still have a lot of friends that are very much in that world yes um a lot of my friends very into like Tony Robbins yes. everything like that I've gone to some of those types of events yes and I was having this conversation with a friend and what she was you know talking about you know wanting less and not working as much or so little because I'm not working at all now. Yes. And it, that's been quite a transition for sure. It hasn't been easy for me, but I'm definitely happier. Yes. Um, and kind of like just sharing some of my journey with her. And she was like, but the whole point of the human race is to progress. And if you're not always going after progressing, then you, le you lose your life force energy. And, you know, that's kind of how she was talking about it. So I guess how would you, not that I'm trying to convince her in and out of anything, of course. but I guess I'm just trying to explain my journey a little bit more so that she could understand. I guess, how do you explain to someone like that who is so attached to keeping this life force energy going and progressing, always yes. progressing in that way? And it's true. We have to progress. But what the creator and higher power wants, the progression with him in our soul, and not in the material world because if we go back to vedic knowledge there's three layers of how we live life the lowest layer is living in state of ignorance and in a state of ignorance people are just um scared that they're not gonna have money they're drinking their problems away or they're using drugs or smoking weed they're just trying to survive but they don't believe anything good will happen and they're just sad and depressed for the most part and this is the state of ignorance then there's people who live in a state of passion and in a state of passion they're chasing if i'm just gonna work i'm gonna get a degree i'm gonna become a lawyer or i'm gonna be a teacher or i'm gonna be an attorney or I'm going to buy a house and I'm going to get all these nice cars and clothes and I'm going to be happy. And then they get the house, then they get the husband or the wife <clears throat> and they get this clothes and the car. And then they're like, oh, now I need to get a bigger, better car. I need to get a bigger home. 
And so they're chasing, working, working, working to get that. And then they're like, hmm, I don't really like my wife anymore. She's kind of aging and we're fighting. Let me dub her. Let me find someone younger and prettier. And now they're chasing to get a better, prettier wife. And the same thing with women. And so there's more and more. And so it's impossible to achieve all our desires, all our wishes. For example, start eating at five-star restaurants whole week. After a week, you won't be able to eat at home cooking and eating at Applebee's. You'll be used to Four Seasons, Ritz Carlton, because you got the taste of it now. Or if you start wearing Rolex, you will never want to wear anything else. Or if you're going to start wearing Gucci, Gabbana, Dolce, Gabbana, and Versace, you would never want to go wear Calvin Klein or Michael Kors. And so your desires will be, I want more. I want now more. And the way the universe is designed, Everybody should feel comfortable having everything, the resources, water, clean air, the trees, everything is located for all of us. But how in a capitalistic society is designed, less than 100 people are very wealthy and they allocated all of these resources to themselves. And this is less than 1% of the people. And 99% of the people struggle. And what's running is greed. I need to have even more. I need to have even more. And then if you run like that in a family unit where husband says, all the good food is just for me. Nice car is just for me. The best bedroom and big nice bed is just for me. And you wife and kids just eat leftover. We'll think what, not, what kind of nonsense it is. We won't be able to accept that. But in a society, if Bill Gates is doing that, we're like, oh, whoa, what a noble man. Or if Amazon guy, can remember his name either. What a noble man. And this is acceptable. And all they're doing is chasing this material world, stealing from all of the resources from 99% of the people. And 99% of the people thinking, I want to be like him. Let me just work hard to get there. And that's where the universe is out of line. Because deep in our soul, we know that this is not right. It shouldn't be like that. Even if they're dumping a little bit of 1% of their income into Africa, let's say. Right? Or somewhere else. But they're really stealing the resources. And we have to learn. Even if you think like, oh, I really want this dress or I want this shirt. you got to ask yourself, do I really need this shirt? And do I really need this dress? And when we're detaching from that want and we save, not drinking this extra Starbucks or extra dress and extra shirt. And now we're located this $100. And at the end of the week, you go on the social media and all of a sudden you see this project, hypothetically, saving wells or cleaning the oceans. And you have the call to help out. And you're now donating this $100 into this cause. That's where fulfillment is. That's how you feel really fulfilled. That you spend this money not on your want, following your greed, but doing a good deed. But in a modern society, we're just, by the way, another Astea that I forgot to mention, going back to the principle of Astea. If, let's say, husband makes money, $100,000 a year, and he spends $100,000 only on him and his family, it's also stealing. Because at least minimum of 2% has to go outside of your family doing good deeds. And in every faith, every religion, and in some it's 10%, and some it's 15 but a minimum of 2% has to go. We're talking about economics, real money, has to go on the projects that person feels like, mm, I want to locate this money to something else. And I remember where I grew up, during the holidays, people would make a lot of rice, will cook a lot of uh, sweet dishes and the kids would knock on their door and they would put in their plate this rice and this uh, sweets because some people couldn't afford it and so we in each faith in each uh, religion we have the, such a thing as sharing in india there's a 
For example, when a woman cooks rice, she puts one cup of rice on the side. And it accumulates, accumulates, and every six months she goes to temple and gives this rice, and it feeds homeless. And we never think about it. The money, if you go give money to homeless, you're actually doing a bad deed because if this person spends money on alcohol, it's bad karma on you. But if you bought the food, you're now serving. But in a capitalistic, again, uh, society, we're always thinking about me, 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 just me, <laughs> more me, <laughs> more to myself. And that's how we're breaking the harmony. And we will never experience fulfillment. Another um, experiment that Harvard University did, they gave a high school graduate to three high school graduates, they each $10,000. And they said to this uh, teenager, go spend this $10,000 on you and then come back and share how you feel. To the second one, they said, spend 50% of this on a good deed that calls to you and 50% on yourself. And to the third kid, they said, spend this $10,000 only on good deeds. And then they start questioning them and asking questions. The first one, how did you feel? You spent this $10,000 on yourself. He bought um, TV, he bought some player, technology stuff. He said, okay, good, just like that. They went to second one, who spent 50% of the money on other projects. And they said, what did you spend on? He said, I bought balloons, um, I got the clown, to go visit all of the cancer kids in the hospital. And I gave balloon to each child in the hospital and the clown was um, entertaining kids. He said, how did that make you feel? He said, it made me feel really good, the $5,000 that I spent in the hospital. That will be the most memorable uh, thing about my life so far. And then they went to the third kid and he went and bought toys to kids who had burned skin from fire and he bought the toys to each child for ten thousand dollars in the hospital as well and this child said this was the happiest day of my life which tells us again that we are born to serve and do good deeds in life but in a consumerism, capitalistic society, we'll always think about more, more, and more. And this is the biggest lie again. Life is, the happiness is actually in simplicity. And sometimes a few of my girlfriends come over and they say, uh, Alisa, I now understand a little bit why I don't want to practice so much spirituality like you. And I say, why is that? So then life becomes so simple and boring. <laughs> because there's no drama. There's just like simplicity. And in this simplicity, there is this happiness. But to outsiders, it might even seem like it's boring. Yes. Yes, Sarah. A mother of two, I live upstairs from my mom's house right i have everything i need you know i'm always grateful i have a roof over my head i have water i have food for my children but like i do want more like i want one of my goals is to like have land and build like a homestead and do everything organic and you know just simple living in a way but i do want that like and i want more so like where do I stand on like not stealing or not like, you know, uh, taking away from myself mm -hmm. and my kids and mm -hmm. all that? Very good question. Let me explain this, for example, in my case. So a few days ago when I asked my husband, I want to go to Europe and I want to go to Bali. Immediately, women in a modern society feel like, okay, I can go to work now. I can save this money and take my husband and kids to Bali or Europe. And in this way, she's violating herself and violating her husband. How she's violating herself is now, instead of giving her love and energy that belongs to her and family, she's now going to go to work. She's going to give it all away 
come home depleted because she really doesn't trust the universe that it will happen. <clears throat> but it will not happen the way and when she wants to in six months this summer. But maybe it will happen in a year or two years. And same thing <clears throat> when we follow Astea and when we follow the Prince of Aparigraha, we have to trust that the universe, God, however it makes you feel comfortable, will provide that, but not on your terms. Because in a modern society, we want everything now. I want Europe now. I want house now. I want car now. But the way the universe works, it will provide. But maybe in two, three years. Maybe... You see, uh, monks don't make any money. And when you talk to them, I talk to yogi monks and I ask them sometimes, how do you survive? They say, as long as we follow the 10 principles of Jama Niyama, it's amazing the way it works. We go to lectures and people donating and we have enough to, to pay for expenses, to pay for food. And even we get 5 to 10% money that they're donating for good deeds. And they're the monks. They're not making any money. And we're human beings where we have jobs or husbands or, and we're having a hard time to trusting that everything will be provided. But we go against the stream. We're swimming against the stream where I feel like, well, I don't trust you because I don't know when you will take care of me. So I'm going to work in order to buy the second housing, in order to go to Europe, in order to buy this beautiful dress or new computer or new phone, whatever that we want. And that's how we're violating ourselves. And we're not in harmony, not in harmony with ourselves, our husband and our family. My girlfriend right now started a job three months ago. She said, Alisa, I used to pray minimum 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. Now, best case scenario, I do five minutes in the morning now. I just don't have energy. I used to spend four or five hours a day with kids, playing with them, spending time with them. She said, now I come back home. How do you call the apple when there's a leftover of the apple? The core? Core. So now I come home and I'm like giving to my kids just the core of the apple. I just talk to them, laugh with them, put them to sleep, and it's just 10 minutes of my time with kids because I'm that exhausted. I'm physically there, but emotionally and mentally, I'm just recuperating. I'm on autopilot cooking, I'm on autopilot feeding them, but I'm not there. I'm not there. 